So here we are in chapter one, part three. Let's power through the rest of this chapter. When we talk about software, also called a program, tells the computer what task to do. Common software that you're probably used to using is Microsoft Word for word processing, Microsoft Excel for spreadsheets, or maybe you're using cloud-based versions of word processing and spreadsheets, such as Google Docs. So we have Google Docs, we have Google Spreadsheet, we have Google Presentation. That's all software, folks, whether, it's, whether you're accessing it through the web, through the cloud, or you've downloaded and installed it on your computer. Now, a lot of times, operating systems come with some default software. It's not part of the operating system. We can actually remove this software. A little harder on Macs, but on PCs, we can go in and say, oh yeah, here's, you know, here's Notepad. I don't need that. Let me remove that. Let me remove other things uh, that I don't need. So operating systems today come with some basic word processing, usually a basic email client, for example. And if we're not using those, we can remove a lot of those. So uh, if you're interested in that, let me know and I can create a video on how to remove software. Mac makes it easy to remove downloaded and installed third-party applications. You just drag it to the trash, boom, done. In Windows, we have to go into the control panel and uninstall a program and click on uninstall. And then it says, do you want to uninstall? And we say yes. And then it says, are you sure you want to uninstall our program? And we say yes. And it finally uninstalls. Hey, it is what it is, right? So we have system software, such as the operating system or tools. Included in this are drivers. And drivers are a piece of software that allows us to interact with the operating system in a peripheral device. So for example, when we install a USB uh, flash drive that hasn't been on our computer before, it's gonna install a little driver so that it knows how to communicate and transfer data back and forth with that USB drive to our operating system. If we're on Mac, it's gonna install one version of the driver that's specific to the operating system. If we're on PC, it would install another. And then of course, applications, word processing, Photoshop, photo editing, video editing, the um, applications, those kind of things can either be downloaded and installed, like I said, or used from the cloud. So utilized from the cloud, in which case we get a subscription. So when you start shopping for software, if you see, oh, here's our subscription, you probably know the application is going to be available in the cloud. And the cool thing about that is a lot of cloud-based applications are not operating specific, operating system specific. So consequently, as long as I have a browser that supports it, I can be on PC, I can be on Mac, I can be on uh, Kali Linux or any version of Linux and get to that app. So that really makes it easy for end users for sure. So installing a program, process of setting up a program uh, on a computer or a mobile device. Most of you know how easy it is on your mobile device to go in and you know go to the Google Play Store, find the app, say install, boom, it downloads, it installs, you're done, you're using the app. Once installed, you can run the program so that you can interact with it. And of course, you interact with the program through the user interface or the graphical user interface of a program. And that, that's what helps us understand and makes the program easy. So, But someone had to design that software, and that's a software developer or software engineer, sometimes called developer or programmer, someone who develops software. And, and they could be designing software for used by many people within a cloud-based system or a piece of software that's downloaded to your mobile phone, for example. So <laughs> I want to bring this to something you're probably familiar with, and that would be software on your smartphone. Just a few years ago, if you wanted to hit the majority of the market for a smartphone application, you programmed it for the iPhone. And today, the commanding market share is held by Android. So that's gonna be your Galaxy phones and your Google Pixels and your Motorola's and all those are running the open source operating system, Android. So by running Android, now you need to program your application to work on Android. If you want it to work on both, you're programming it for both. So communications and networks, you know, in the course of a day, it's likely you use information generated by one or more of these communication technologies or that you use the technology to communicate. Chat rooms, not so much, but most likely all of you are using email. Fax is not so much because 
we're putting attachments to email. FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol, it's a protocol. It's actually used in email when you attach a file to an email. Plus, in Dropbox, if you've ever used Dropbox or Google Drive, and you drag a file over your Google Drive, well, it's using File Transfer Protocol to transfer it from your computer up to the cloud to your drive. GPS, of course, built into your phones, instant messaging, um, internet, news group, and then RSS, which is your um, which is your news group feeds for like blogs. So you can get an RSS reader and subscribe to different folks' blogs or vlogs, for example, so that you don't have to go out to 15 websites. All the information comes to you via one application because you've subscribed to their blogs. Video conferencing, uh, used all the time now. Matter of fact, uh, Microsoft has integrated Skype. You know, they bought Skype years ago and, and have integrated it into their instant messaging. So consequently, I can use Skype to instant message. I can quickly with one button start up my webcam and do a video conference with my webcam and microphone. Voicemail, all digital now. VoIP, which is Voice Over Internet Protocol. And I'll explain Internet Protocol to you in more detail later. But these are no longer analog phones that plug into the wall. They're actually plugging into the network. So they're part of the network. And that allows us to do a lot more than just phone, uh, phone calls over those devices. Wireless internet access points. So Wi-Fi. And then, of course, wireless messaging services. So communications devices. So here is a Wi-Fi device. You know, internet service provider gives you access to the internet. They might have a wired connection such as Ben Broadband that comes into your home. And then you might actually come out of the modem into one of these wireless devices so that you don't have to connect your devices wired. And the protocol here for Wi-Fi is called 802.11. So as we increase the letters behind that, it essentially increases the speed that we've gotten over the years. Okay, So communication, of course, allows us to communicate with other devices in our home, broadcast. Uh, an example, I have a Chromecast at my home, so I can tell my Google Home, OK, G. I don't want to say the whole thing because my phone will go off and say, what do you want? How can I help? OK, G, broadcast this Netflix show to my TV in my living room. And boom, my TV in my living room turns on, Netflix turns on, and we're watching it. Because, boy, imagine how much time it might take to go actually turn on the TV and turn on the cable box and connect it to the Internet. Oh, that would take so much time. So anyway, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular radio, you're probably all familiar with those. We've talked about what a network is. We've talked about the fact that the Internet is the network of all networks. And anything that's connected to the internet is connected to a huge network. You at home might have a wireless router like this and connecting all of your devices out to the internet. Thus, via this device, these devices can also communicate inside your local area network. So I might set up a printer wirelessly and thus my desktop and a laptop and even my phone can print to the printer. Okay, so that's what's creating a network and each device gets an IP address. We'll talk more about that later. And thus we can communicate. You're probably familiar with a home network. You probably have one that's wireless. It's a connection to the internet. It shares a high-speed connection across all your devices at the internet. That's how your TV or your um, optical disc reader, like a Blu-ray disc player, can access the internet as well. You can get to photos, music, share all this stuff over a home network. So I might have a multimedia server that has movies that I've legally purchased that the kids can watch on their laptops just by connecting to that server. Or my music library. I'm a former professional musician, so I have thousands of songs um, in my music library or videos that I like or printers like we talked about, sharing printers, sharing other devices. And the same thing holds true with business. We just tend to share more hardware, more business-related functions. Uses of technology is immense. It has changed education for sure. This is a great example. A decade ago, yes, you could have taken an online class, but not with the quality 
that is that we're able to offer today with these videos on YouTube and interactive um, interactive quizzing like you took in your syllabus quiz you know whereas you're watching the video it pops up questions you answer them etc um, live lectures interacting interacting with instructors live I took a course years ago um, in Native American history that was actually taught by um, a gentleman who was living on the Cheyenne Reservation back east so just amazing how education has changed and we can now take classes from people who are the foremost in authority um, we can take classes from Stanford University we can take classes from a university in China right here live and in real time or not in real time government has changed finance retail just look at the list entertainment has changed we don't go to Blockbuster anymore we just fire up the Netflix we fire up YouTube TV you know a lot of people are getting rid of their cable TV and just utilizing the web for their entertainment so users home users small office users the mobile user power user enterprise user you know um, I'd love to be a mobile user I think it'd be great to live in Hawaii and be able to teach from there full-time wouldn't that be great and we're actually seeing that where companies are hiring professionals in their field who want to live here in Bend but might work for a company in Silicon Valley but they're able to afford housing up here they're able to have a better quality of life here in Bend but work for a company in Silicon Valley without the expense of an eight hundred thousand dollar home or a million dollar home uh, you know when they can buy a three hundred fifty thousand dollar home with the same square footage and a bigger lot here in Bend so you get the idea here is the summary go ahead and pause and read that and that is it for chapter one take care and have a great day